Greetings and welcome to Game Programming One from Johnson County Community College Online Edition. This is just going to be a quick video to orient you on the course and show you what tools you're going to be using and some suggested tools as well. Now before we get into that, a little bit of a warning. Programming is hard. Game programming is really hard. It is going to knock you down, impale you, teabag your corpse, resurrect you, and do it all over to you again. And your only possible response to this can be, thank you, sir, may I have another? Seriously, it's that hard. Uh, it's game program or Programming is about solving problems. Game programming is about solving problems that aren't well-defined. And that just adds a whole extra layer of complexity onto it. Furthermore, this is an online class. To take an online class, you have to be self-motivated. You don't have that mental pressure of, well, if I don't show up to class today, the teacher's going to know, the teacher's going to see that I am not here today. You don't have that mental pressure, that, that routine of, I know I need to be in this room, in this building, at this time, on this day. It takes a lot of self-motivation to do well in an online course. Yet, to add more on to that, this is a summer course. You have got half the amount of time to get everything done. So, what I'm saying is, you have chosen to take this class in the hardest possible way. You, you cannot come up with a harder way to take this class than an online summer session. You are going to have to work on this class every day, Monday through Friday. You, you cannot go a day without working on this class. If you do, you're behind. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of dedication on your part. Uh, you're going to have a lot of sleepless nights. You know, you just you got to be aware of that. You've got to, you know, make sure that you've got the time to do well on this class. You now, if you don't have that time, if you don't think you've got that kind of dedication, I realize it can mess uh, schedules up, getting off shifted by a semester, but better that than failing. Speaking of failing, I want to make sure that everybody understands something right now. As of this moment, as of the start of this class, every single person is failing. You all have a 0%, an F. The only way that F is going to change to a D, and then a C, and then a B, and hopefully an A, is if you do work, good work, and turn it in. If you do not do anything, well, guess what? that F is going to stay exactly where it is. All right, so now that I've gotten all the doom and gloom out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the course um, and some of the tools that you're going to be use, using and what we're going to be doing. Uh, probably the biggest thing here is knowing where to go to actually uh, get all the information. Of course, you know, if you're listening to this video, duh, you know this part. Uh, distance learning, uh, dl.jccc.edu. All of the course information is going to be here, so no course information is going to be elsewhere, uh, with the exception of the videos. The videos will be both um, linked on the course page, and it will also be uh, on the my YouTube channel for my school account. And I'll have a full video dealing with using Angel, uh, but for now, we'll just skip over that and move on to our primary tool, Unity. Uh, Unity 3D is the tool that we're going to be using for this class. Uh, we're going to be uh, focusing mainly on algorithm development on this first semester. We'll get more into the 3D stuff um, in the second course, but this is what you need to download. Now, in the labs, we do not have 4.1 yet. In the labs, we have got, I believe it's 3.5.6, which, and if you missed that little click there, um, if you go to download on the Unity page, and then right underneath the download link, you'll see a looking for an older version. Click on that, and then you'll be able to get one of the 3.5 versions. Download 3.57, that's fine. Uh, there's no project incompatibilities between 0.6 and 0.7. There are project incompatibilities between 3.5x and 4.x. So, if you want to be working on this at school and at home, you need to have Unity version 3.5.7. That, or deal with the annoyance of downloading and installing uh, Unity 4.1 every time you want to work on things in the lab. Um, if you just want to be working on things at home, I would actually recommend just using Unity uh, 4.1.3. Uh, 
Uh, for the videos in this course, I will be using Unity 4.1. There's no real major differences except that it looks a tiny bit different, but uh, everything's still organized exactly the same way. Most of the buttons are in exactly the same spot. It's just the uh, hierarchy. Um, I'm sorry, not the hierarchy. The uh, project resources section looks a little bit different. But I will be using uh, 4.1.3 in the videos. I have both versions, so there's no worries as to which one you choose to do your work with. Now, since most of our stuff is going to be 2D visualization this semester, uh, there is a free, and we only need the free version, tool that we can get uh, called Orthello 2D Framework. Uh, you can get this from the Unity Store, and I will show that in a later video but it is an excellent 2D framework that we can use to do uh, 2D visualization within Unity. Unity is a 3D engine, so it requires a little bit of hammer hitting to get Unity to do 3D. Continuing on with some resources, opengameart.org is an excellent place to get graphics, sound, music, um, and eventually 3D assets. Now, we are programmers. We are not artists. We are not musicians. You know, we write code. You know, we don't do the pretty pictures. So, using some place like Open Game Art to grab some resources so that way our projects look good is uh, very helpful. Moving on from there, if you want to create your own sound effects, bfxr.net is an excellent resource. Uh, you basically have some you know old style sound effects that you can create and uh, yeah, works out pretty good. Probably have a, a video specifically on this that will be optional. Uh, you are not required to put in sound effects for this course. Uh, continuing on with music, No Soap Radio is an excellent resource for uh, music tracks. There is an obscene number of tracks here, 378 tracks that you can use that are under uh, Creative Commons Attribution Licensing. So this is an excellent resource for music, as is in CompTech. Uh, in addition to having online graph paper generators, which just automatically makes them awesome. But they've got royalty-free music in a wide variety of styles. So if you go to the full search, you can see he's got all different kinds of genres, different feels. Uh, you've got uh, some you know, pretty good options here. And again, this is all royalty-free um, Creative Commons attribution licensing. Uh, sound Bible is another good place for sound effects. I don't like this one as much because you've got to be really careful with your uh, licensing. There's a lot of non-commercial stuff on here. Uh, both uh, Open Game Art, uh, BFXR, and No Soap Radio, and Computech, all of those things can be used for commercial projects if you want to take a school project and try and continue on with it. Not everything in Sound Bible can. You can see right here, attribution non-commercial. So you would not be able to use this sound effect. Um, moving on, we have got Killer Tracks. Now, this one requires a specific license. Um, this is, you know, production quality music here, so all the stuff on here is really good. It's very well produced, but you're going to need a special account to log into this one. Uh, should you find a track on Killer Tracks that you want to use, uh, let me know, and I can get you to log in information. Finally, uh, moving off of music, let's just get reorient a little bit. We want to talk about Blender. Uh, Blender sort of goes hand in hand with Open Game Art because I would say probably 95%, if not more, of the 3D models on Open Game Art are done in Blender, which means you need to have Blender installed in order to import Blender files into Unity. Don't have to know how to use Blender, just have to have it installed. Um, for creating simple uh, 3D shapes, uh, Blender works pretty good. Uh, you can also use Hexagon from Daz Studios. Uh, Hexagon, however, is not free. I believe that has a $20, $25 fee to it now. But Blender works really good. It is hard to use. The documentation is horrible. The interface can sometimes be baffling. Be aware that you're going to have to spend some time learning how to use Blender. On the 2D side of things, we have GIMP. Now, I could care less what 2D art package you use to create your 2D art assets with, um, but GIMP is free, legally, and it pretty much has the same level of functionality as Photoshop or any other fancy package. 
this is the package that I know. This is the one that I can help with. Uh, you're free to use any th any 2D editor program that you want for creating the, such assets, but this one I can answer questions on and help with. And finally, on the highly optional side of things, we have star UML. Uh, none of the assignments will require you to use star UML, but I highly recommend downloading it, reading the manual, and if nothing else, getting familiar enough with it to be able to use its state diagramming. Because diagramming out the logic of your code is critical. Whether you're doing it with star UML or Visio or something else, you know, it is you know, piece of paper, it doesn't matter structure write out your codes logic you will find so many logic errors if you do that if you write out your logic and then go through it step by step you know manually saying okay do this 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 wait a minute how can i do that i don't where is that variable it helps immensely do it trust me star uml is an excellent free uh program open source program that you can use that uh you know, allows you to do diagramming. And if you want to dig fully into the UML language, uh, it's also a great way of, you know, planning out your classes and everything else. Okay, and then that's sort of the uh, lightning fast overview of all the different tools that we're going to be using. Uh, the primary one being, of course, Unity. Unity, you must download this one. And while you don't technically have to get Orthello, uh, it's going to be highly recommended unless you want to deal with drawing the 2D images all on your own. Uh, everything else on here is pretty much optional, but nice to have. And that's it for this video, so I will see you on the next one.